Hello, my name is Paul Miners, and welcome back to another one of my Asana training videos. In this video, I'm going to talk about why you might use a certain view when setting up a new project in Asana. When I talk to clients, people often say they've set up a project using, for example, the board layout because it's just visually what they prefer and that's just how they like to see the project. I think a lot of people don't realize that certain views lend themselves more to certain types of projects and it's good to be aware of why you might want to set up a project using a particular view. Now, if you have any questions at the end of this video, feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you would like one-on-one -on -one help with setting up or optimizing your Asana account, or maybe just improving the adoption of Asana within your team, then click the link in the description below to learn more about my Asana consulting options. Now, when you create a brand new project in Asana, this is going to be where you're first presented with a choice about which view to use. Now, it really doesn't matter too much what we choose at this stage because you can change the view later on. Uh, we have the typical list view. I really like this one because we can see a lot of information on the screen. It's sort of your classic spreadsheet style layout where we can see task details, assignees, uh, due dates, and all your custom fields. We then have the board layout. Some people refer to this as the Kanban view, where basically our sections have been turned into columns. We also have the timeline view, which is a very visual way of seeing when tasks start and finish, and you can see the dependencies between those tasks. And then finally, we have the calendar layout, where you can see a month at a time, and you can see when different tasks are due. So let's go through these one by one and I'll, I'll explain why you might prefer to use a certain view for certain types of projects. So here's an example of a project in the list view. And this is just my demo account. I've got this admin and accounting project where I'm managing just miscellaneous admin tasks. Now, some of the benefits of using this view, firstly, I find you can see a lot of information on the screen at once. For each of these tasks, I can see who it's assigned to, I can see the date, and I can see all my custom fields here. So if you do have a lot of custom fields set up in your project for things like I've got invoice amount, invoice types, priority tags, if you're using a lot of custom fields in your project and you want to see a lot of information at once, I find the list view works very well. This is also kind of like an interactive spreadsheet. So I can actually click into any of these cells and I can change the value of these custom fields. So I find making changes to tasks also very quick and efficient using this list view. And I find the list view is just a good default view. If you're not sure how to set up the project, I recommend just start it off as a list because it's actually very quick and easy to input tasks as well. I can simply start typing the name of a task on a new line and then hit return on my keyboard to type another one and another one. So task entry is very quick using the list view. Next up, we have the board layout. And this is a very popular way of setting up a project. I think people find this often quite visual. And I find the, the board layout lends itself really well to projects where tasks need to move through a process or a workflow. So an example of that would be design requests. It could also be bug tickets, support requests, where I start off a task on the left-hand side, and you can see I've got this section for new requests. And then we move the task through sections for like assigned to designer, in progress, ready for review, and then complete. Now, this is by no means the only way to use this project, but I find the board view works well for these process workflow projects because we can easily see how many tasks we have at each stage in the process and where a backlog may potentially be occurring. Another benefit of this view, as you can see, is you can see images that are attached to tasks. So we have this logo attached to this task here, and we actually get to see a thumbnail of this image in here. So if you do have a project that's uh, quite visual, you're working with design assets and images, that might be a reason to use the board view is so that you can easily see those images alongside your tasks. The board view is also quite interactive. I can click here to change assignees and dates, but I do find that any custom fields and tags, you do have to click to actually open the task before you can make those changes. So it is an extra couple of clicks to change custom fields. And compared to the list view, we just can't quite see as much information on the page at once. Next up, we have the timeline view. Now I find the timeline view works really well for projects where you are working backwards from some kind of end date, 
or you're working forwards from some kind of start date, and the tasks need to happen in a particular order. So an example of that might be here, for example, a new product launch where we're trying to launch the product by a particular date. Maybe a client project you're working on where you're designing a new website for a client and you've got certain steps that need to be completed. Maybe planning an event or a trade show where you're working backwards from the event day and there's, there's steps you need to do to prepare. Now the benefit of using the timeline, as you can see, is it's very visual and it allows you to easily see where are we now, which is this blue line here, and actually I'm going to zoom in a little bit to quarters here, so I can see where are we now, this blue line, and I can see what do we have in progress at the moment, what is our sort of immediate focus, so I can see right product specifications here. I can also see what are the tasks that are upcoming over the coming weeks or months. I can see when different tasks start and finish. And this helps me focus and prioritize on those more immediate tasks and, and um, what we need to do now. I also find adjusting the start and end date of tasks really easy in the timeline view. So I can just click and drag to change my start date or my end date or I can just click and drag the entire task if I need to uh, push it back to a later date. I can also very visually see the dependencies between tasks. For example, this task, blog post content, is blocked by a couple of upstream tasks. We can see those there. And it's blocking a couple of downstream tasks. We can see those linked through these arrows. So this helps me visualize and understand the relationships between my tasks so I can see maybe if we're not making Pro uh, progress in the project, maybe there's a certain task that's dependent that we need to get done first. And also the other reason to use these dependencies is if I need to delay the project or a task, I can shift this task back and watch what happens. It's going to automatically adjust those downstream dependent tasks. So this is really useful if you do need to push back certain tasks or push back the project itself and you want to adjust the timeline and everyone else's work all in one go. And while I'm on this topic, I also have the ability, which not a lot of people realize, uh, to click and drag and select entire portions of tasks within the project, and I can drag them all at once. They don't actually have to have those dependencies. So if you are making a big adjustment to the project, it's much quicker and easier to do it here in the timeline compared to clicking through the list and trying to adjust each of these date fields one by one. Now, if you'd like to learn more about getting more out of this timeline, I'm going to link up here a video I have uh, where I share some tips on using the timeline. And also it, at this point, I'll, I'll also mention there is this Gantt view as well. At the time of recording, this is a fairly new feature. It's similar to the timeline view. There are some subtle differences. And I'm going to link up here another video where I compare the differences between the Gantt view and the mm. timeline view. And last, but certainly not least, we have the calendar view. Now, I find the calendar view useful for projects where you have time-sensitive tasks or you're planning um, some kind of schedule according to the month. So a great example would be a content calendar. And I'll link up here another video where I share how I've created a content calendar in Asana. And this is actually my live account we're looking at now. I like using the cal calendar layout for my content calendar because I can easily see when I'm planning to publish different pieces of content. So you can see this Friday coming up. This is actually when I'm planning to post this video that I'm recording right now and my Asana newsletter to my subscribers. You can see I've got an interview coming up in a couple of weeks. If I scroll backwards, I can see historical content, what's been published. And so it's just, again, a more visual way of seeing when tasks are occurring. A bit like with the board and timeline layouts, I do find it is a couple of extra clicks if you want to edit custom fields and see more information about a task. But it does make moving and rescheduling tasks very quick and easy because I can just drag them around. I also have a few options up here. I can choose to look at either the month view and I can choose to show or exclude weekends. And there's also a useful weekly calendar view, which if you want to see tasks in a project coming up this week, uh, again, a nice visual way of seeing the, the upcoming work. 
I find the calendar view is probably used the least often compared to the other views that we've looked at. Not because it's not useful, but I just find its use cases are a bit more limited other than you know content calendars like this or just seeing visually weekly, monthly when tasks are due. Um, usually the board or the timeline or the list view is better for most projects that you would be working on. Now, as I said at the beginning, it doesn't matter which view I choose to use when I set up my project because I can easily toggle between the views up here at any time. And if I want to change the default view that my project goes to when I navigate to the project, I can simply click the little menu here and I can set the new view as the default. So now if I navigate to a different project and then back to my, my original project, it's gonna default to that new view that I have set up. So that is a look at the different views available in Asana. And my key takeaway from this video is if you are someone that has only ever used the list or the board layout in Asana, which are those typical default views we often use, if you've never used the timeline or the calendar, then I encourage you to experiment because you will find that certain projects really do work better in some of the other views. I hope this video was useful. If you do have any questions, leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.